Welcome to the 11th Annual Sydney Comedy Festival, proudly presented by Cooper's Original Pale Ale and the Comedy Channel. We are only a few minutes away from the start of the show, so we ask that you turn off your mobile phones and remind you that recording of any description is not permitted. Now settle into your seats, take a sip of your pale ale, batch of cider or wild oats wine, and get ready for tonight's show. Joel, where are you, mate? You're fucking late. We're only like three minutes, okay? And I'm just saying, when you're not here, I stress. Yeah, I will. Yeah, I will. Yeah, I'm having one. <laughs> oh, bloody cabs. Sorry, mate. I'm really sorry, mate. You. Having you relaxing way, good. Is it yes. helping you? It yes. Helping you relax? Yes. You're not feeling too tense or anything. Can you stop talking? <laughs> Dude, have you got that hair gel? Yeah, you put it in my. It ruined my shirt, man. I had a funny shirt I was gonna wear. It got all over my. Okay, settle down. Just you. You got it. Yes. Do you mind passing it over to me so I have to deal with that? <laughs> Shut up! What the fuck is the matter with you, man? I'm sorry for bringing a bit of positive energy into the room, you know? Here at the comedy festival, I'm feeling good. Cool. We've got about five people here by the look of it. I'm really pumped up. It's great. What's the matter with you? Okay, I'm sorry to interrupt, man. I'm just not sure that's the best advice I've ever given you. I don't think the relaxing wank is the best thing for you, man. Like, look at you, you're all physically tense. And you haven't even got anything to catch it in, man. You're completely unprepared. You're just wasting time. <laughs> it's not working anyway, man. Fuck it. Oh, did you bring my jeans? No, I didn't bring your jeans, mate. It's not up to me to bring all your shit. Did you do anything I told you to do? What the fuck is wrong with you? Why are you so tense? No, I'm just saying it's our first comedy festival. I just want to be smooth, man, okay? It's going to be fine, man. It's a good opportunity. It's no, easy it's for you to say you're all sort of young and that. I'm, I'm turning 37 this year and I'm just starting to feel like, you know, life is passing me by, man. It's Come on, man. You're not that old. I mean, you're all right. Well, I know it's not 40 or 50, but at least by then you know it's over. You know, I mean... <laughs> I just feel, I feel like I've just hit this iceberg. And the I'm, Titanic. Shush, shush, shush. Sorry. I just feel like I've hit this iceberg and like part of me is like the guys in steerage. And <laughs> That's a Titanic. Let me know the fucking story. Okay, part of me is like the guys in steerage and there's just this mad panic that I haven't got enough time. The other part of me is just like clueless, wandering around first class with a martini assuming everything's going to be okay. And it was a good analogy. You kept fucking interrupting. No, I'm not saying it wasn't good. It just was a little bit long and not really that funny. I no, just, dude. Every time I got a bit of momentum, there you're sitting there letting the air out of the tyres. Okay, I'm sorry, dude. Just whatever, man. Don't stress. Okay, it's all good. Relax. We're gonna be fine. It's easy for you, saying Not even thirty yet. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? This can't be a. <laughs> what the fuck? I'm sorry, man. Okay, I'm just not at a point. Where I can talk about it, okay? About what? About my age! 
You're not even 30. <laughs> it's six more months before you turn 30. Relax yourself. Relax. You've got to relax. Relax. You... So much for coming. So much for coming. So, 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 so much for. Oh, fuck. Jesus. Oh. So much for Carl and Collective, mate. Hey? You right? Yeah. Okay, you're gonna need something to clean up. They're my fucking jeans! Huh? Oh. Jesus Christ, man. I'm sorry about my little meltdown, dude. I'm just saying, you don't need to be so insecure, dude. You, you could like, go out, choose another career path, do a whole other degree, by the time you finish, you wouldn't even be 33. <laughs> stop it! Fucking stop it! Okay, we're gonna show to do, okay? So just pull your head in and fucking keep it together. I'm just... I'm just getting to that stage where I'm, I'm worried that people aren't gonna think about me or care about me anymore. Okay, okay. No one cares about you and no one thinks about you now. Okay? You know what happened to me? I went to the doctor to say they told me to go on cholesterol medication. That's ridiculous. I oh, know, that's what I said. I was just... It's crazy, what, you know? Dude, you've been fat ever since I've known you. Getting on cholesterol now is not going to do anything for you. Well, point is, that's what they do to people when they turn 50 and 60, you know? Yeah, 50 and 60 stone, dude. Like, oh, fucking honey. <laughs> okay, look, I'm sorry, man. Okay, look, we all have our things, okay? I was at Centrelink the other day, and I was filling in the form. And you know how when I'm concentrating really hard, I get this sort of brow thing happening, like the wrinkles? Yeah. Yeah, well, so I was filling out my form, and there's this old lady there, and she... She started laughing at me. I was like, what are you laughing at? She said, you look like Gordon Ramsay. So? Dude, he's really fucking old, man. He's not that old, and you've got these epic wrinkles. Man. Me? Yes. They're not that bad. And they're like Gallipoli trenches. Oh, fuck off. Mate, if I blew a whistle, six Anzacs would run out of that straw. Why don't you go and have another cholesterol tub at your fat fuck? Hey, look, we can call each other names, or we can grow up and do this fucking show, hey? Okay? Sorry. <coughs> Live. It's a... Are you doing? Go backstage. Life. The great journey. No matter where you are now, where you've been, or indeed where you intend to go. For all of us, it starts the exact same way. Being shot forth from our daddy's ball sack. <laughs> Attention all spur. There has been a dramatic rise in testicular pressure. Cranial command has reported the unexpected picking up of a bar skank. All mature sperm, please report for immediate ejaculation. Oh, oh my god. Was that Lieutenant Johnson on the PA? Yes. Saying something about ejaculation? Yes, where the hell have you been? I was having a sperm dump. Sit down, sperm. you know we've only got a couple of seconds. Sit oh. down! I can't believe this is happening. I mean, I've waited my entire life. I don't know. I, I can't remember a thing. I mean, one minute we were hurtling up the shaft, waiting to blow, and then someone yelled out contact, and the sperm beside me swore. And, and I was in the vagina. <laughs> How can you be sure? It's very dark in here. I mean, we might be on the end of a biker's beard or the face of some kind of farmyard animal. I mean, I, I'm... No, 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 no. no. This is the vagina. I can, I can feel it. Where are the others? Are they coming? Did they... They're dead. Oh, I just... <laughs> we, you I what? Thought, you thought what? Well, I just thought we'd all get here, we'd find an egg each, we'd move in and sort of just live happily. That right. was never, ever going to happen, man. There was half a billion of us. I mean, that is scientifically impossible. It no, but I mean, like, surely some more of us are going to, you know, some... No, no, they are all dead. We're the last two from the bottom. I mean, what about Jason, Matthew, Claire? They're dead. How about Billy and uh, Conrad and... and They're dead. Guys? But I mean, what about Belinda? What part of they're all fucking dead do you not understand? Okay, okay, it's just coming as a bit of a shock. I'm just... I'm sorry, I don't know what to tell you, man. I mean, we've trained from this ever since we were... Remember the rhymes we learned back in sperm school? I remember the rhymes. I'm a sperm, it's time to learn. Follow the flow and take the turn. Use my tail to thrust into the uterus. Beware of birth control. 
They'll eat them, swallow me whole. That's not the one I'm talking about. Oh, you remember the other one? Yummy, 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 I got tum in my tummy. No, no, I'm talking about the one that speaks about what it's like to... For a sperm, there's nothing finer than entering the vagina. But when all is said and done, of eggs there are but one. Well, what about twins and triplets? Uh, damn it, I'm a sperm, not a doctor, man. Okay, I'm just saying the chances of more than one sperm making it to an egg are extremely slim. So only one of us can make it? Typically, yes. I mean, there are occasions where more than one... Ah! What are you doing? Get off me! What are you doing? I just thought if only one of us can make it, I should just kill you and be the one that makes it. We have just survived the ejaculatorial holocaust and all you can think about is murdering me. Are you fucking serious? No, but I mean, in Sperm Hitler's book, Mein Spunk, he was saying... Oh, I don't think we should be taking our morality lessons from Sperm Hitler, matey. I mean, I prefer the philosophies of Sperm Oprah. Who says that the best gift we have to give or receive is to honour our calling. And not to kill our last living family relative. I mean, that might have been sperm Jerry Springer, but my point remains the same. It's not cool, man. Okay, I just, I'm just worried that, you know, if I don't kill you, when I turn my back, there's nothing to stop you from murdering me. No one is killing anyone, okay? One of us makes it to the egg and the other one has to die. Of natural causes, that's, that's the way it has to be. Yeah, I know, but if I just drop dead in some vagina... I mean, no one's ever going to know I live. No one's ever going to exist. I, I, I won't matter. I knew you existed. I mean, half a billion of your admittedly now dead brothers and sisters knew you existed. I mean, Pete, we learned about this. I mean, remember the... <laughs> I, sometimes I feel like only half a sperm. and The, the rhymes we learned back at school. I mean... Mm. About you... when you leave the ball sack... Okay. <sighs> Some sperm get shot onto boobs. Others go to tubes. Some get frozen in tubes, and some drown in lube. I didn't remember that one. <laughs> it's basically saying that once we leave the ball sack, we're lucky to get to the vagina. We could end up on a bus stop bench, I mean, in someone's hair. No, I know, and I don't want to sound unappreciative. It's just, I'd, I'd hope for more. <laughs> Think of it this way. It's, it's, it's not about the egg, okay? It's about the swim. I mean, we don't spend our our whole lives in the ball sack before, before finally getting shot out and into some random vagina, witnessing the genocide of all of our brothers along the way if we don't at least, you know, enjoy the ride. Look, if it means that much to you, you go. Find the egg and make a baby. But what will you do? Oh, look, I'm okay. I'll stay here and enjoy the view and work on my novel. Fifty sprays of grey. Jizz. Okay. Thanks. Pete! Don't blow it. <laughs> Sperm hug? Sperm hug. As Mr. Gray pulled his foot from my anus, I couldn't help but notice that his expensive leather shoe was missing. <laughs> Hopefully he'll be back for that later, the big spunk. Dude, Chapter dude, there's a poo down here, we're up the arse. <laughs> wait, wait, did you say poo or shoe? <laughs> Tonight we continue with our series, Unimportant People, Pointless Lives. We're looking into a rare humanoid subspecies known only as the unemployed comedian. It's 4 p.m. The unemployed comedian has just roused from his slumber, having been awoken by inconsiderate neighbors mowing their lawn. Shut the fuck up! He'll go through a series of stretches, some graceful, some simply terrifying. As he empties the eight liters of Fanta from his bladder, he takes a moment to admire the fluoro yellow hue of his urine. In the winter months, steam cascading from his urine flow is indicative of a lack of central heating, given his failure to pay the power bill. The only point comedian will then get on Tinder, swiping yes to no less than 35 would-be mating partners. Sadly, his mass-distributed mating call is to no avail. He receives no matches in response. Oh, wait! There's one, and she is fucking gorgeous. I think I might... Oh, wait a minute, she's just from one of those paid webcam subscription sites... Defeated in love but not life, the unemployed comedian seeks sustenance from his most treasured source. A bong, shaped like Master Yoga's head. 
Today, he has lots of weed. He'll smoke like a king without a care in the world. Tomorrow, he'll run dry. Anxiety and depression kicks in, and the great migration to his dealer's house will commence. The comedian, or unemployed comedian rather, will allow, usually allow himself a short window of recreation in order to get his mind focused. Seven to eight hours of Xbox is just the right thing to get him switched on. At this juncture, it might be difficult to distinguish between the unemployed comedian and the common bum. However, the unemployed comedian's day will take an abrupt turn once every great while when he decides to actually start working on material. He'll meticulously write down the moments from his own life that he finds funny. Wee wee, so yellow, look like a lightsaber. Today, his hilarious thought flow is interrupted, however, by a knock on the door. In a panic, he seeks desperately to hide his bomb, running around the whole room before finally returning it to the exact same spot from where he picked it up. <laughs> He'll spray an entire can of Link's deodorant in the air, and he still won't open the door. He'll establish a vantage point to see who it is. It's some kind of religious group. No, hey, fuck off! still there. He's left with no choice but to answer the door. He's still slightly hazy from his 4pm bong hit and easily confused by their capacity to string whole sentences together. Despite this, his spiritual side is soon touched by the idea of one true God and he signs on to become a Jehovah himself. Jehovah. Yeah. The professional comedian might have noticed that this brush with religious fanaticism was comic fodder that would have given material for years. The unemployed comedian didn't notice this. He goes back to working on a bit about pissing on the toilet seat before evolving it into a dreary analogy about the Titanic. Gold. It is at this stage, however, we are fortunate to witness a most rare and unexpected occurrence. The unemployed comedian receives a phone call from his acting agent. James, I thought you'd forgotten about me, man. Yeah, no, no, I'm all right. Yeah, no, he's here. Job. Excuse me. James, how are you, bud? Oh, yeah? Sweet! Yeah, man, lock me in, great. Thanks, man, bye. Dude, you know that acting job we both went for? Yeah, I got it. And now, the envy sets in. Joel, matey, glad you could make some time for your agent. Hey, Come James, on. how are you? Yeah, good, good. How'd that gig go? Really good, man. It was a lot of fun, yeah. Yeah, anything you want to tell me? No, no, not about the gig. I did want to have a chat to you about some other stuff, though. Mm -hmm. um, just auditions, man. I, I, I sort of, I love doing the odd ad and stuff like that. They pay really well, but I think I'm really ready to do some bigger stuff and sink my teeth into some, some meat. You know yeah. what I mean? Hey, mate, as your agent, I want the same thing for you, okay? All right, that's why I want you to have a really serious look at this course. No, okay? no, 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 man. Every time I come in here, you're trying to flog some sort of course or a workshop being held by an ex-neighbours actor who hasn't worked since 93. It's just okay, alright, so you're there. You don't need any training. I didn't training. say I was there, I'm just saying. Yeah, because I've got to tell you, Joel, a lot of people don't respect smut. South Melbourne University of Technology is a perfectly respectable <laughs> institution, man. And besides, I've done heaps of workshops and that for you since. Don't okay, I? look, if you don't need more training. I'm not saying that. Don't man. need my help. I de definitely didn't you're say You're ready to mix it with the big boys? Yes, yeah, well, yes. You I think, Joel, you think? Because I can tell you now, the top actors, they can drop into any emotional state like that. I, I can do that. Well, let's put your money where your mouth is. I'm going to just rattle off a series of emotions and we'll just see you become them. Yeah, yeah, great. Ready? Yep. Happy. Sad. Angry. Horny. Lonely. Really horny. Rapey. <laughs> Concentrate. Frustrated. Grieving. You've just come. How do you think you went? Be honest. I don't think rapey's an actual emotion, man. Never felt a bit rapey? No, I mean, what? You've never rung in to work and said, can't come in today, just feeling too rapey. Well, that's beside the point, man. I'm just... Look, it's the, no, it's exactly the point. I want you to be honest with yourself here, Joel. How do you think you went? Considering what that was, I think I did okay. Yeah? Because I'll tell you, it was awful. If I had a choice of watching that again, or being fisted by Freddy Krueger, I'd be telling him to go get the gloves, okay? I just don't think any director outside of a porn set is going to ask to see the I've just come face. Well, that's where you're wrong. Because I just had a call from the producer of the commercial you did yesterday. Oh, yeah? Yeah, apparently the director called you aside for a bit of one-on-one -on -one rehearsal time while no one was looking. Yeah, yeah, he did, yeah. He and was... you just went over there, rehearsed your lines, and went on set? Well, no, we explored... And at no time... 
did it occur to you to offer this man a blowjob? What? What? A director gets you on side for some one-on-one -on -one time while no one's looking, and you just run lines. Hang on. What, you know what it says when people see an actor doing that and not kissing the bald-headed butler? It says amateur. I don't think that that's a thing. I've never heard of that before. Most actors don't need to be told, matey. Okay? They just realise the direct correlation between their increased efforts at offering fellatio and the quality of the roles they're getting. But every now and then we get some little moral crusader who just needs a little help. Okay? And that's what this course is. Okay? Have a look. Giving head to get ahead. <laughs> a, an oral journey into career development. No, man, it's, I, it's run by a couple of professional No, right? man. Like once I do something like that, I, I, there's no coming back. You know, I just, Your point? Look, I know I'm getting old, man. Okay? I'm, I'm about to turn... <laughs> I'm just about to turn... <laughs> I'm getting older, okay? I'm just saying, I know I haven't taken the world by storm, but I just... I, I don't want to suck dick, man. No one does. Gay guys, girls, it's nasty, it's disgusting, it's all purple and scary. Looks like a little bald alien trying to headbutt you, okay? But when it needs to be done, we roll up our sleeves, we get in there and we go at it. Uh, if, if I do something like this, I've just, I've got no value, man. Okay, I... Joel, I'll break it down for you, mate. I've got two files on my computer. One's full of auditions for actors that, don't, that hate having carpet burn on their knees. The other one's full of auditions for actors that don't mind playing the game. What, what do you got in the non-fucking dodgy pile? Laughing man number three in a Woolworths commercial. <laughs> Wrinkled brow onlooker in a gold lotto, com lo gold lotto commercial. Fuck off, what else have you got? What do you mean? Are you ser that's it, you're serious? Well then there's the other file. What do you got in there? Okay, lead supporting actor in the next Underbelly series. What? Who got the lead? Lincoln Lewis. And he... Like a vacuum matey, the whole crew. <laughs> Look, don't make a decision now. It's a big one, but it, if you want to matter in the industry, it's a decision you've got to make, okay? Go home, have a think about it. If you decide you want to enrol, give me a call, okay? And I can even send a couple of actors around for you to practice. Okay? It's all well and good for us to sit up here and poke fun at dignity and performers that are willing to abandon dignity for that shot at glory, or anyone in general. The funny thing about dignity is that it can abandon us involuntarily at any time. I mean, it can happen in the blink of an eye or in the unexpected twitching of a bowel movement. So with that in mind, our next story unfolds along the dry and dusty roads of North Nigeria. That's right, folks. We're in Africa. No! It's a Disney, everyone knows it. Oh yeah, right. but did you learn the actual lyrics? No. I mean, but no, like, just, no, it's just like, if you're up there pretending to be a black dude singing a song, yeah. they haven't even learned the lyrics for and you're, you're a white guy. Isn't that racist? I don't want to be racist. No, I, don't, I don't know, but you might be. Like a word boy. <coughs> a tour bus is rattling along the dry and dusty road. Yeah, we, we didn't have a flat tyre. Dude, they're African drums. It's from the did Eddie you learn Murphy? the African drum song? Everyone knows. No, I'm just saying, them. if you didn't learn the African drum song, you're just up there pretending to be a black African guy playing drums when you're just a white dude. Isn't, isn't it racist? Anyway, the tour bus is full of fat, ignorant, bald, white tourists. In the middle of the back row sits the subject of our story. For the sake of anonymity, I'm going to call him Peter. No, He's... No first names. I'll, I'll call him Adams. He's sitting in the middle of the back row and he's chatting away merrily. Well, I mean, we really wanted to get away from the tourist sort of Africa and get into the real Africa, you know. <laughs> An unexpected abdominal twitch. Nothing to worry about. And, and did you get to Tanzania to see the gorillas? Because I don't think there's much money coming off like that. <laughs> A much larger abdominal twitch. Adams is in trouble. That curried tortoise he enjoyed for lunch wants to poke its head back out. And according to Google Maps, the nearest public toilet is in Barcelona, Spain. <laughs> As the bus continues along the road, the tour guide points out various local landmarks. Over here is where they filmed the latest World Vision commercial. And over here is the birthplace of Ed's. Adam's lethargic tourist selfies are indicative of the worsening severity of his stomach cramps. Eventually, the bus pulls up at a military checkpoint. Okay, everybody, just please take a seat. Thanks, and wait, sir. no, no, take a seat, oh. sir. 
I go, I give bribe, you stay or they shoot you. Adams is forced to wait. Whilst waiting, he employs a couple of very well-known diarrhea stalling techniques, like maternal labour-like breathing. It evolves into the fist-clenched leg stomp. Then the fist-clenched leg stomp whilst walking around like a constipated chicken being rogered by a 12-inch dildo. Then the two-handed abdominal grab, which gives him some relief and makes him relax. Big mistake. The tiniest squirt, yet enough to fill a quarter of a cup. Adams now faces an impossible decision. He could stay on the bus and shit himself in front of his fellow tourists, or he could get off the bus, looking for a toilet, and risk being shot dead. The choice is obvious. Whoa! 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 He said, you go, shit, toilet, go, that way. Adams runs, no, walks, to a corrugated ramshackle iron shed. Inside, what appears to be the world's tiniest squat toilet, with a diameter no bigger than a 20 cent piece. He's left with no choice but to squat, aim, and hope for the best. It's, ah! over, in, it's over in seconds. Sweet relief. Oh! Sweet relief. Oh! Sweet relief. Oh! Sweet, uh, sweet, uh, sweet, uh, 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 uh. sweet relief, until he glances down. <laughs> Looks like he missed. Desperate, he searches for something to wipe with. There's not a square of toilet paper to be seen, however, hanging proudly on the wall, a Nigerian flag. <laughs> Third world national pride takes a back seat to first world problems on this occasion. All wiped up, Adams rehangs the flag, pays his respects, and heads back to the tour bus. Oh, so, oh, you okay? Yeah, make sure you tell me thank you. Oh, just, uh, where did you go and do a shit on the floor of the sergeant's office? Adams is faced with one final impossible choice. He could go and apologize to the guards and offer to pay for defecating all over the floor of their humble office, or he could get back on the bus and fuck off. That was a beautiful dude, I'm going to go. Oh, it's meant to be five, but uh, we haven't got enough material, so I'll just make it ten. So we get okay. to that. Do you want a drink? Yeah, can you give me one of those healthy green Cokes, dude? Hey? You know, the healthy Coke with the green label, the new... They're not healthy. Well, obviously they are, because they've got green label and they've got, like, <laughs> it's, not, it's, it's, not, it's not a banana or an orange, it's still Coke. Dude, it's a fucking Coke with a green label, okay? It's obviously meant to be No, I mean, health. babyish is green. Toxic waste is green. It doesn't make it healthy. Man. Ah, fuck, all right. Just... Hey, did you know how before we were talking now about sort of wanting people to start maybe giving a fuck about us and all that. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, dude, dude. That in mind, I've, I've, I've been thinking, I'm like, the older we get, the more we can sort of embrace our age and start acting professional is probably the key to making people care. Yeah. Yeah. Dude, for fuck's sake. Dude, that in mind, I've been coming up with a bit of a company policy, you know, a corporate structure for Spreadham's Comedy. For what? For Spreadham's Comedy, man. What is it? What? It's our company, dude. It's, it's not a company. It's just a name we came up with to register for festivals. Yeah, no shit. I'm just saying if we make it real, maybe people will start caring a little bit. No, what do you okay, mean? so I was looking. A lot of the major companies today have what's called a vision statement, right? What's that? It's a, a statement concerning vision. No, I mean, and, what's, that, what's ours? Oh, ours is to be recognised as a comic force and make a shitload of money. Okay, okay? Cool. And they also have what's called a mission statement, okay? So I was thinking ours could be... To make a shitload of money and achieve recognition as a comic force. Okay, that's the same thing, matey. You just switched it around a bit, okay? Yeah, but does anyone really understand the difference between those two things? Yeah, a vision statement's where you want to be. Mission statement's how you get there. Do you want to fucking write this or what? No. Well, shut up then. Okay, so I've been going through a couple of things that companies have. And you have like sort of annual leave, sort of staff picnics, uh, refunds policy. What? Uh, what? What? Uh, a refunds policy. We're right? not giving money back. No, no, just bear with me, man. It's a good way to get credibility. No, 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 no. We're not giving money back. Now listen to me, man. The other day I was in Newtown, right? And I went to my independent local grocer. And I, yeah, I bought an apple, right? And I was eating it on the way home. And I was like, this is a bit dry. I'm not enjoying this at all. So I took it back and I said, I don't like this apple. And they cheerfully refunded my 18 cents. 
and it made me feel good. I was happy. I said, I will come back to this store. So Yeah, yeah but you were happy. They would have been sitting there going, we're an independent grocer. Why the fuck do we have a refunds policy? But I just think, man, people come to these sort of things expecting an experience, and if you can't give it to them by rights... No, 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 we're not giving money back. Okay, look, I'd never say this in front of an audience, but you never give money back on a ticket, okay? Rule one. Okay, I've got family here today. But if I was out there after the show and they asked for their ticket back, I'd, money back, I'd tell them to go fuck themselves, okay? That's a bit harsh. You meet your sister here? No, she didn't come, man. Oh, no? She wanted a fucking freebie, and I'm not doing that shit anymore. Yeah, no, okay, all right, so we're in agreement. There's no freebies, no refunds, okay? All right, fuck, okay. Um, corporate write-offs in the form of charitable donations. Oh, that's worse than refunds. What no, 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 just, just bear with me, man. It's a, it's a really good way to look as though you, you care and you get credibility. And I was like, we could align ourselves with something that we've sort of experienced and been through. And, and okay, you know, what do you got? What do you got? Well, fucking homelessness. Fuck them. Uh, unemployment. Fuck them. Methadone. They're homeless and unemployed. What, we've got to pay them three times? Fuck them. War widows. Fuck them. That's the point. Uh, erectile dysfunction. No one help me. What about Our Lady of the Ways Hostel for the bald and the overweight? Yeah, yeah, right. Fuck them. <laughs> Palliative care. Fuck them. For children. You bastard. We were just going to keep going until you found one. I couldn't say no to. Well, I think it's important, man. Alright, so how's it work? Okay, good, finally. Okay, look, I've been doing some sums, and I was like, if you take into account our revenue streams, minus our, our income uh, production costs sort of thing, uh, you and I would both come up with 350 bucks each. Sorry, how did that? Well, have a look, I've got a spreadsheet here. So, uh, revenue streams are nil, um, production costs are nil, and I've pledged 700 bucks. Why would you pledge money we haven't even made? I thought we were gonna fucking make money off the show, dude. So I'm we're sorry. just gonna come up with 350 bucks each? No, man, there's a fucking transfer fee. It's 352.50, so if you... Oh, for <laughs> fuck's sake! I can cover you if you... Oh, fuck, don't worry about it. As we move into the second half, I guess, second, third, whatever the fuck it is, we've decided, we had a bit of a chat before when you guys weren't looking, and we've decided that it's time to stop being so juvenile and crass, and to sort of try and educate and sophisticating and make things a little bit more sort of excuse me a little bit more highbrow so with with that in mind for the following exploration of the male psyche i'm going to be playing joel that's that's myself uh, a typical everyday guy on a regular friday night pete is going to be playing my penis Come we're not just playing xbox all night are we Come let's go out try to meet some girls Come on, come on. At least get the laptop out and watch some porn. I type in fist, bottom, gardening tools. Yeah. Ooh, phone's going. Don't press pause. Hey, mate. Oh, yeah, 7.30 at Newmarket. Any girls going? Uh, is your missus going, mate, or? Oh, no, she stinks. Well, well, any of her friends, or? Yeah, yeah, the cougar, the other one. Well, what about her mum? No. <laughs> No reason, dude. Just, just being a dickhead. Don't worry. All good. See you soon, man. Bye. Yeah, we going now? Let's go. All right. Pump up. Maybe give me a wash, though. Maybe trim me up a bit too chew back. Really. <laughs> 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 ah, caught. You caught. Caught. Hello, mate. What's that? ID. Yeah, all right. Fucking bounces. Thinks he's the big dick. But his dick's not six foot four, over 100 kilos. <laughs> oh, babes. Nine o'clock. Three o'clock. Ooh, ten o'clock. <gasps> Redhead looking. Two o'clock. Redhead. Redhead. Bah. Redhead. <clears throat> oh, she's cute. Hey, she's got a wedding ring. Sorry, um, can I have a, uh, a double rum and coke, please? Oh, no, don't drink. Don't drink that fucks me. Don't. No, what? Oh. Oh. Hey, boys, how are you? Is she there, the cougar? Oh, Mrs. Turner, Dude, you came. Fly, fly, fly. You, um, you came. How, how have you been? You, you good? Go for a hug. Give a bum grab. It's really good to see you. I um, she's hot. Looking really good. Hotter than her daughter. Way better than your daughter ever looks. 
No, no, I'm just saying there's different ways of looking at things. Change the subject. Sort of, hey, what are you, how are you, what's happening? Oh, you, you're a, a feminist now. Abort, bail. I'm so sorry, I just realised I've got something on over here. I've really got to go. And, I couldn't believe it, I just contracted polio, so I've, I've kind of got to get home. Oh, man, I'd rather get caught in a zipper again. Oh, all right, recess, recess. No. 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 Oh, the redhead. She's looking again. Oh. Breathe me down. Okay. Okay, walk over. Oh, dude, I'm sticking out. Stick out. <clears throat> hey, how are you doing? Cracking conversation starter. Have you seen the latest Star Wars trailer? <laughs> no, I'm just saying you've got a bit of a Princess Leia vibe going on. You look a little bit like... No, no, she's, she's from Star Wars. It's... No, no, it's a, it's a movie. It's not an actual war. I'm trying to say to you that... Well, don't worry that she's walking away. It doesn't mean she doesn't like you. Just say something sensitive. I, I really enjoy the Twilight movies. If good I save, good save. Okay, now tell her she's got a cute bum and you'd like to take her home. You have a really cute home and I'd love to take your bum. A bit raping. <laughs> I'm so sorry that didn't come out no, the way I... she's not offended. She's not offended. Just, uh, what? what? I, yeah, I, I agree that Jesus Christ will save all sinners oh, on earth. Oh, fuck That's that. Go find the feminists on there. I said, Mr. Turner! <laughs> okay, so as I'm getting older, um, uh, I'm finding, yeah, I still have the mind of a 16 year old. I'm constantly just like trying to prove to people, my loved ones close to me, that, you know, I, I am got, you know, I've got some sort of semblance of, uh, of responsibility. So I find myself off volunteering for tasks I am completely ill equipped to do. Even things as simple as just picking up my knees from the daycare. Oh, Peter! Thanks so much for coming in. How are you? Good, good. Careful about Gormody. Have a seat, please. Uh, your yeah, secretary said it was a bit of an emergency. <laughs> yes, unfortunately, we've had a bit of drama here today, and your little niece is right in the firing line. So, okay, so what happened? Before I get into that, Peter, let me give you a little bit of a background about myself. You see, I'm a former elite special forces paratrooper who spent three years hogtied to a rot rotting bison's carcass in a Chechnyan prison camp. Whilst there, I didn't have much. I had my daily rations, three beans and a used condom full of muddy water, and the electrode attached to my scrotum and connected to the communal car battery. As I say, I didn't have much, but I respected what I had, as well as the things that belonged to my other inmates. Now that I run a daycare centre, how do you think it makes me feel when one of your little cacks steals from me? Well, she hasn't been stealing, has she? Well, I want you to take a little bit of a look at these pictures. Tell me what you see. Sandbox. Look closer, mate. Oh, someone's been shitting in there. Oh, Gabby's not shitting in there, is she? Oh, no, 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 they're not hers. No. They're mine. Dude, you shouldn't be shitting in a sandbox if the kids are playing there, mate. Peter, there was a time in my life when I had no choice but to shit in a sandbox. I'd like to assure you those days are well behind me. So what is this? I want you to take a closer look at the picture. This first one here on the left, that's my morning poo. 6.05 a.m. every day, like clockwork. The second one here, that's my after lunch, after the coffee poo. You can see the coloration slightly different if you have a closer look. This third one here on the right, that's my 3.35 p.m. A little bit thinner than the other two because I usually don't eat much after lunch. Now tell me, what do they all have in common? I was just thinking, what? Well, isn't it obvious, Peter? They're not in the fucking toilet bowl where they belong, are they? Why not? Because your little Gabby has picked them up and put them in the sand pit. What, dude, why didn't you flush them? Well, Peter, after spending three years in a Syrian prison camp on a one flush per month ration, I find it extremely wasteful. Yeah, but mate, you're in Australia now. It's the land of the multi-flush. You can use three flushes to flush one turd if necessary. Okay, we flush condoms, tampons, drugs, anything that... I you... will not have some freedom-loving, flush-happy hippie lecture me about my post-poo practices. Yeah? Yeah, okay, okay, okay. I'm just, I'm just saying, like, how didn't even know it was Gabby? Well, let's just say she was caught brown-handed, Peter. Why would she still poo? Well, you know, I've been asking myself the same question. It's a complete mystery. But then, during her waterboarding, during her advanced interrogation, it became apparent that she was quite fond of you, as though she looks at you as some sort of a, a role model. And I began to think, perhaps this sort of behaviour has been learned. Yeah, but who would have taught her to steal poos? Well, I don't know, Peter. You tell me. Do you steal poo? No. <laughs> Are you sure? If I went over to your house, it wouldn't be a nice big glass display cabinet with all your favourite turds polished up and mounted on little wooden blocks with little plaques on them? So no, no, I flush them, man. Oh. Well, I can't for the laugh of me understand where she would get this, this affection for such a... Well, dude, I'm, I'm, a, I'm an uncle, man. Yeah, so I go around there, I pull faces, I make a laugh, and yeah. 
doesn't make any sense. Well, what do you actually do, Peter? Well, well, I'm an actor, but you know, it's been a bit quiet lately, so I try to do a bit of stand up, and uh, you know, I have a few opportunities there. So, but I fill my time with a bit of writing. Um, most of it's unpaid, and yeah, you know. Oh, Peter, sounds like a long-winded way of saying I do fuck all, doesn't it? <laughs> Look, I tell you what. Before we continue, I just need to get a couple of uh, things for my records, if that's all right. Yeah, just sure. a few questions for you. So, Gabby is your sister's daughter, yeah? Yeah. Okay, so obviously you're her father. But no, what? No, no. Really? That, that would be illegal now, I know. Oh, but obviously, if it was legal, you'd be cool with it. So I'll just no, write no, down... No, 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 not at all. That's gross. I wouldn't do that, no. Right. Well, I'm just saying, during my three years incarcerated in a Russian gulag, incestuous behaviour was not only common, it was keenly encouraged. Yeah, so but I mean, mate, you're in Australia now, okay? It's the land of the beach, babe. There's plenty of, plenty of women for everyone, okay? I mean, you might get lucky to have two women in one night. You don't have to sleep with your sister. I will not have some failed comedian with no card of love for his own sister message me, uh, uh, what's that word? Lecture me about my sexual partakings. <laughs> Gabby's my niece. All right, man. Shit, chill out. Okay, look, I'll tell you about my story, okay? I've got to have her home in half an hour for when my sister comes over to pick her up, okay? And she needs to be happy and smiling. Otherwise, I get this whole lecture about how can I be so irresponsible as a 37-year-old, which shits me to tears because I'm not 37 yet. Peter, 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 Peter. I'll get it, yeah? Sisters, right? If my sister's shitty with me, I'll have blue balls for six months. I completely understand. So, that in mind, I'm, preferred, I'm uh, prepared to sweep the props under the carpet, yeah? Yeah? Yeah. Okay, Peter. Just need one more thing from you. Sure. I can't remember what it is right now. I usually have to sign her out. Yeah. Yeah. I will give you the, the ledger to yeah. sign for yeah. you, all right? We'll release the body. We'll forget what? the whole body? thing. What body? What? Oh, I told you she was in the firing line. Did you think I was fucking joking? I was serious. I to my sister with a fucking body. Well, that's all right, Peter. We have a furnace here. I can cremate oh. her on site for you. We also have some child Fuck slaves. Me. I might be able to find one that looks like her. We can do a bit of a... Peter, you all right, man? Show me supper. Vladimir, fire up the furnace, yeah? <laughs> Peter, Peter, how are you? <laughs> Other than dead, of course. Um, wait, what? Ah, uh, yes, I hate to be the bearer of all that old chap, but you are dead. But, no, how? I would... Well, somebody forgot to take their cholesterol tablets, didn't they? And now you're stone cold dead and you're here with me in purgatory. But, I didn't even think heaven and hell. What? Purgatory? Oh, purgatory is very real. It's a bit of a. a, a, a halfway centre between heaven and hell, you know, where, for those whose lives weren't meaningful enough to warrant direct admission into either. Such as yourself. Yeah, but surely I've got to be closer to heaven. I mean, you know, I was, I was nice to Jehovah's Witnesses. I was respectful of foreign toilets. I uh, had a company that had a refunds policy. Peter, you know? sorry to interrupt that thrilling tale, but your life was the very definition of mediocre. I mean, if you'd lived a life full of meaning and inspiration where you'd brought joy into the lives of others, like a, a Justin Bieber sort of figure, then sure, I'd send you up to heaven. And if, however, you'd lived a life of evil and, and hurt where you'd brought hatred and hardship onto the masses, like, say, the Catholic Church, or you'd, you'd be straight to hell, but in your instance, you did neither. So we have to perform a bit of a sin-based assessment to decide... Okay, yeah, but I still say I'm going to be closer to heaven, okay? I mean, sure, I wasn't an angel, but I didn't kill anyone. Oh, no, no, you didn't. And well done on that front. However, that's only one of the Ten Commandments. There's nine others. You, are you familiar with them, Peter? I am. Would you because like using the Lord's name in vain was something that you did frequently. In fact, your very last words on earth were, fuck me, Jesus Christ, God damn in hell, my heart has stopped. I didn't do anything else wrong. Didn't you? Thou shalt worship no false gods, ring a bell? I didn't worship any gods. Oh, no, you didn't. But you did have an unhealthy fascination with the website redtube.com, didn't you? <laughs> Thou shalt honour thy day of Sabbath. Which one's that? Moving on. No, well, hang on, hang on. To be fair, like, I mean, I was unemployed for a big stint, so, you know, I... It all just sort of blended together. So you might say I had lots of days of rest. Not a bad point. Uh, Honour thy father and mother. You know what? The angsty pothead teenage years pretty much rule everyone out on that front, so we won't worry about that one. Uh, thou shalt not commit adultery. I was happily married. Not back on October the 3rd, 1994, were you? Your under-14 rugby team won the grand final and you slept with your coach. Not only a priest, but a married man. 
No, we, we were all drinking together. Um, we might have passed out on each other, but I didn't do anything. <laughs> you didn't, but you let him do everything, didn't you? So which is No, I didn't. Really? That wasn't consensual? What did he do? Dear God. Uh, what about that time you stayed at your best friend's house? You went through all of his shit, then shagged his missus and stole a fun-sized Snickers bar from under his pillow. So that's coveting stuff, stealing, and rooting around all in one yeah, blow. Yeah, I mean, I told him I was sorry. Oh, did you? Yeah. Oh, I mustn't have read the part in the Bible where it said, Thou shalt not root thy best friend's missus unless thou says sorry fucking afterwards. <laughs> My mistake. Yeah, okay, I fucked up there. Uh, it's really not looking good for you here, Peter. Uh, thou shalt not bear false witness. Lying. You did plenty of that. No, I didn't. There you go again. Uh, we will move on now to the seven deadly sins. Well, hey, wait, hang on, wait, what? I mean, what is it? Ten Commandments, seven deadly sins. Which one are we meant to be following? You can't just have these endless lists. Well, I could send you straight to hell if I talked about your effort with the deadly sin of gluttony and possibly add an eighth for boldness. And no, you'd fuck be... off. The ten, ten Commandments is enough. Well, I'm... Jewish people have 613 commandments. Fuck the baby Jesus with a burning Bible. You've got to be kidding me. He's a mother Mary spread eagled on a picnic table being rogered by Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. That is enough with the goddamn fucking blasphemy. As I said, it's really not looking good for you. Well, hang on, wait. Look, I didn't read the Bible or anything, but I never heard of any purgatory wanker. Well, I'm not in the Bible. So who are you? Gary. <laughs> Gary the purgatory I'm wanker. I'm Gary the dentist, okay? I... I'm a bit of a special case. It, it was October the 6th, 2006. I woke up in bed next to my best friend's wife before going downstairs, eating all of his rice bubbles, fingering his cat, and being a Sunday, leaving for work, wearing his wife's shoes. On the way to work, I lied to a homeless man who asked for 20 cents and then stole his plastic bag full of plastic bags. When I arrived at work, I deliberately pa poisoned four patients with expired nitrous oxide, then left. On the way home, I rang both my parents and told them to fuck off and did a routine shit in my neighbour's letterbox. Then I was struck by lightning and I've been here ever since. You're heaps worse than me. Are you honestly going to sit there and try and tell me you've never fingered a cat? No, I mean, I other than our know. love of rice bubbles and shitting in letterboxes, you and I have nothing in common, OK? I mean, look, we both did things wrong, but to put us in the same category is insane. Peter, 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 the, the entire purpose of that explanation was to show you that your life by comparison was extremely mediocre. So yeah, but fuck you, it was my mediocre life. You don't get to judge it, okay? I mean, by all fairness, I should be up there oil wrestling Marilyn Monroe. You should be down there licking Hitler's balls. Uh, ball. He only had one. And uh, Marilyn's down there with him, believe it or not. She had two. My point remains the same, okay? Giving billions of people free will and then judging them from a single point of view is fucking insane, okay? So screw you, I'm heading off to heaven. Daddy's bored. Here, kitty, kitty, kitty. Where are you, boy? All right. How'd you feel the wind? Uh, yeah, not yeah. that good. Um, no, but uh, I just, I was wondering about you. You know, at the start, hey, you were saying you were worried about being 40, and then you were 37. Sort of 37, and then you were able to sort of get rid of that and go on with the show without stressing about it, man. Like, I'd really like to know how you do that. Well, I'm a man. I just take all those emotions. Anytime there's anything bothering me, I just take it and I just force it right down. Let it clog up arteries, give me irritable bowel, cause tumours. So I don't fucking cry, okay? Okay. That's what you do. Thanks, man. I'll give it a go. I mean, you won't really panic. You're not worried about turning 30. Yeah, you know, it was just for the show, eh? Yeah. Yeah. You're not really having panic attacks about that stuff. No. It's fine. Dude, I'm not. Cool. Not, I'm young. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. All right, cool. So, next show, May 30. Uh, call time's 5.30. Uh, it's number 30, Victoria Road. It's a building built in the 1930s. Um, so, yeah, 30th of May, 5.30 for call time. Uh, I'm going to get the beer. They're $4.30. I'm going to get $4.00. Can you lend me 30 I don't have any money. Okay. All right. Don't worry about turning 30. Mm. Daddy. <laughs> <laughs> Start clapping.
Thank you very much, folks, for coming out.